Hello, welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Mark Dennis. I'm one of the founders of the firm. And today uh, we're talking to Kobe Hanok, CEO of Webit Nano. Good morning, Kobe. Hey, Mark. Um, today you publish your annual report for the, uh, the past financial year, uh, 24. And uh, there was a, uh, a headline number there, 1 million in revenues. That was very interesting to see. Obviously, you, you signed a few deals uh, in the last few years. But can you talk us through these revenues and what they mean and, and also how they how we should look at those going forward? Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, obviously we're very proud to, to have revenues and uh, uh, we signed the agreements, as you said, we, we have the agreements with Skywater and uh, DB Hightech. Um, and as we move forward, we hit uh, milestones associated with um, with payments and also in general, you know, revenue recognition doesn't go directly based on payments, but on progress uh, with the project. Uh, we made very good progress uh, with DB High Tech. We, uh, we announced recently that we also taped out already our demo chip there. So uh, this is moving forward nicely. And uh, as part of that, we can recognize more uh, more revenue from this uh, this project. Um, uh, you know, so that's that's a good start. We're uh, looking forward, uh, you know, to the future where we'll be signing more such agreements and and growing the revenues. So uh, I said, I believe, uh, you know, a year ago that we'll start having having a trickle of uh, of revenues, and I think that's what's happening. Right. Uh, well, that's good to hear. I, I remember you mentioning recently that, yeah, to me, that your team is very busy, extremely busy, I think you put it, which is very good. It's what we like to hear, right, as, uh, as investors. Um, but can you be a little bit specific in terms of what you're busy with? Obviously, you're, you're talking to, to, uh, to existing and new uh, clients, but also you've got the R&D side that you're still working on. Mm -hmm. Can you, for outsiders like us, can you sort of paint the picture of what the team is, is really busy with at the moment? So, you know, obviously the R&D work is continuing. We're, we're continuing to improve the technology. This is something that's very important that people understand. You know, in this in this kind of industry, if, if you stand still, you're actually falling behind. So we're constantly uh, trying new ideas, trying to see how we can improve the technology even better, etc. And that's ongoing. Uh, uh, and we have the team, the French team that's sitting there with Letty and, and working on, on those things. We have now quite a, you know, a nice team in Israel that's supporting that. But the real thing is um, we are really swamped with work with the potential customers. We, we uh, are engaged with, you know, well over a dozen uh, foundries, IDMs, product companies. Um, and and it's it's really interesting, you know, all of these people, they it's kind of crazy. It, it drives me crazy sometimes because they know that they need reram. They they know that this is the future. They're seeing everything, but at the same time, they have their big concerns on, you know, is this specific reram from Webit? what we want um does it do exactly you know the voltages the currents the the die the uh die size etc cetera, etc cetera. does it give us what we need and and so they're constantly asking questions they're asking us to show them you know to prove all kinds of things and then so there's just so much work that you know obviously the the sales and marketing team is involved but actually the r d is uh is pretty much uh, consumed by uh, by all of these requests. Um, the great news is we're making very good progress here. We're constantly making positive progress uh, on, on basically all the fronts uh, here. And um, so, uh, you know, we will get to the point where we actually get, get the first, second of these deals uh, signed, obviously, after. DB High Tech and uh, and Skywater and and we'll be moving forward. So we we just need to break this barrier now that everyone is you know so super cautious and and wanting to see you know someone else move forward first. But we're making very good progress there. And you mentioned the, the DB High Tech. Can you talk a little bit about the tech transfer to uh, DB High Tech? So you taped out with them, but what? 
what should we expect you know, in this year and, and also in 2025? And then maybe also uh, while you're talking about that tech transfer, also update us on Global Foundries because you've been working with them for a while. Um, so I think investors are probably really curious to see how that uh, collaboration is going. Yeah. Uh, so I I said we're we're involved in in you know well over a dozen projects and and obviously DB High Tech is is not uh, you know a potential customer they're an actual customer. Uh, I think uh, at the AGM I don't remember if it was last year or the year before I showed kind of the timeline and and how things work exactly when you when you're working with. Uh, with such a foundry, uh, you need to transfer the technology, and it's quite a project. And it takes, you know, the uh, roughly uh, nine, ten, whatever months plus. Uh, so we we did that. We we got to the point where we taped out our demo chip, which of course was a very important step forward. We, you know, you don't tape it out before you see that you have good results, that the technology transfer was done properly. And, and things look good, et cetera. So now we we did that tape out. Uh, we're waiting for the silicon uh, that should come back in, in a few months, in several months. Um, you know, we're actually going to be, as, as people hopefully already start understanding, you know, to, to qualify a technology, you need to have at least three lots with multiple wafers, et cetera. Uh, so we're going to be doing more tape outs in order to have more lots. And uh, our goal is by the middle of 25 to already be qualified at uh, DB High Tech. So things are moving uh, according to plan. DB High Tech is a really good partner. Uh, we have a great working relationship with them. And, uh, you know, in parallel, we, we have been updating potential customers for this technology. We've been, um, uh, you know, pushing that forward. Uh, people are, are sitting and waiting and wanting to see more results, etc. cetera. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely uh, optimistic about this relationship with uh, DB High Tech and, you know, their very serious uh, foundry. Um, oh, and you asked about uh, GF, so obviously that's another one uh, that is more public that we're engaged with. Uh, we're seeing very good results uh, with the wafers. Uh, as you know, we've implemented our RERAM on uh, GF22 uh, uh, nanometer wafers. Uh, we're constantly continuing to test uh, these wafers to... Um, uh, to look at ways to improve them, etc. Uh, the demo, by the way, that we have uh, based on the chips from these wafers is uh, is really a very strong demo. We've been using it with customers. There's very good reaction from customers uh, for this. So overall, you know, all of this activity, this is a major activity for us that we're continuing to work on. Um, we have, uh, of course, uh, as I said in the past, GF and its public knowledge, GF is also looking at other rear M options. So uh, we don't have uh, a licensing uh, agreement with them uh, right now, but, uh, you know, we're continuing to do our work and, uh, uh, you know, to show the, the good results. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a very important activity for us. Okay. Um, looking at other players in the industry, so TSMC um, being the biggest player uh, in terms of you know, foundries, but also a very sort of leading player, I guess, in you know, when it comes to uh, to emerging a uh, non-volatile memory. Um, they've seen seems have made a pivot away from MRAM um, towards VRAM, and of course they've been shipping VRAM in, in in products already. But it seems that lately or more recently they've made that pivot more strongly. Can you talk a little bit about how RERAM is, in, in a broad sense, right, industry-wide, um, is developing, as in uh, how do potential customers perceive it at the moment, and what's the transition that you're seeing for RERAM at the moment? So, uh, you know, I talked many times about the fact that, uh, you know, it's it's been many, many years already that people are looking for uh, a replacement for Flash. Uh, you know, it's been many years that people realize that flash hits the wall at 40 or 28 nanometer. They need to move to smaller geometries. Uh, 
and, and they need something which has better endurance, better retention, etc. Uh, the first technology that came out was MRAM, and I think as people know, MRAM is already out there in mass production, uh, being used, uh, and uh, TSMC was one of the first uh, companies to offer MRAM and others also. Uh, however, as, uh, as I've mentioned many times, MRAM has many limitations. MRAM uh, has limitations in terms of just the, the cost to manufacture it. I mean, beyond setting up a, a very special manufacturing line, uh, the cost of manufacturing it, and then the, the sensibility or the sensitivity to uh, magnetic fields is a major issue and you know more and more people are realizing that we have so many magnetic fields around us we don't even realize that and and mram is is not a good solution there not to mention secure devices etc so uh the search continued and now that reram is out i think uh, we're seeing and and it's maybe, you know, the last year, year and a half that has really shown a major transition that people realize RERAM is here. So it's not a future technology anymore. It's here. TSMC is offering it. Webit is now, has has it qualified and, um, and people want it. I think TSMC are seeing the, the requests from their customers. Uh, a year ago, if you would have looked at their NVM roadmap, it was all MRAM. There was barely a mention of RERAM in the corner there in the uh, in the small side there. Uh, the 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 NVM roadmap that they uh, that they published, I guess what uh, one or two months ago, is all RERAM. You know, suddenly you see everything RERAM on it. There's barely a mention of MRAM, you know, a little uh, MRAM activity still going on in 2024, but beyond that, you don't see any MRAM anywhere. Um, I think that reflects the feedback that they're getting from customers. Um, and we know, you know, this is already old news that Infineon announced that all of their automotive uh, uh, chips will include uh, RERAM in them. And that's obviously influenced a lot of, companies in the automotive space and in other spaces, um, you know, without going into names and, and specifics, uh, some of these companies are very sensitive, but major consumer companies have already made it extremely clear that they cannot work with MRAM. They totally veto MRAM because of the magnetic sensitivity. So overall, we've seen a huge transition in the market in the last year, year and a half, with the focus moving to RERAM, and and it's great, it's great. I mean, it is, uh, it's just what I expected to see, but seeing it actually happen and seeing how all of these companies are focused now on looking for a good RERAM solution, uh, it makes me even more bullish than I was before. Well, that's saying something because you were pretty bullish already, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, final question, Kobe. Um, there's one uh, slide in your uh, or one page in your in your report that sort of lays out what you still want to achieve in 2024 in the calendar year, uh, which is is ambitious. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about what is in store in the next sort of four months? I mean, the, the year is not over, but almost. So we got four months left. What can investors look forward to in the next uh, towards the end of the year? Well, we we said already a long time ago, we want to close more agreements and we're making very good progress on, on a lot of fronts, actually on, on many, many fronts. Uh, so the goal is to, uh, to get agreements signed both on the foundry slash IDM side and also on the uh, product companies where we're pushing forward on these things, and uh, I think uh, we're now in a in a good position there. So uh, I really want to see uh, us closing, you know, at least one or two agreements there. That's that's the plan right now. Uh, yes, I I know some people are saying you said that in the past there was some level of delay. This this industry is a very difficult and cautious one and things take uh, somewhat longer. But the fact that now everyone is realizing that they need RERAM and, and the, the pressure is building on everyone to move forward here. So that's that's really the 
biggest uh, goal. Beyond that, you know, we're continuing the, the technical work, we're continuing uh, uh, qualification work at different uh, levels, uh, you know, working on the 150 degrees to show it, and et cetera, et cetera. But closing these agreements is the, the biggest focus for sure. All right. Well, there's four months left in the year, right? So overall, we'll all be looking at the NSX announcements very uh, sharply. Kobe, thank you very much for your uh, for your time today. And uh, again, we'll uh, we'll keep track, obviously, of uh, of what's happening in the next uh, couple of months. Thanks again, Kobe. Well, thanks, Mark.